Using Google Images to Find Visual Aids, produced by Professor Franklin Reynolds. Start off by going to google.com. Once you get to google.com, on the right-hand side, you'll see a link for images. Click on Images, and you'll be taken to the Google Images homepage. Once you've arrived at the Google Images homepage, type in the topic that you plan on doing for your speech into the search bar. I'm going to type in liver, the human liver. When the search results appear, you'll notice a variety of different images of the human liver appear. Every image that we will see on this page has been tagged with the word liver. Some of them might be humans, some of them might be animal livers. All we know now is that every picture that we're seeing has been tagged with the word liver. Before we move any further, there's an important button that you need to be aware of. Underneath our search bar, you'll see a variety of icons, such as all images, news, books, videos, settings, and then you'll see tools. Click on the Tools button and you will notice a new drop-down underneath our options appears and includes Size. Size will show us when we click the downward arrow next to Size, options for large and medium images. Large is very useful when you're looking for photographic images. Medium is useful when you're looking for charts, diagrams, maps, and other images that are not photographs, but rather drawings or computer-generated uh, images, such as the ones you're seeing on the screen right now. When I change this to medium, you'll notice most of the images appearing are going to be diagrams and drawings, as opposed to real photographic pictures. While this one is a photographic picture, The others are drawings so or diagrams. So what is the difference between a large and a medium image? A large image has more pixels or the little dots that make up the image itself. Mediums do not have as many pixels, but that doesn't make them a bad image. If you are looking for a picture in large, and you can't find a photographic image that's large enough uh, for your, your viewing, you can always go to medium. However, it's better to start in large when you're looking for photographs, and when you're looking for diagrams, maps, charts, look in medium. Let's take a look at the Taj Mahal in India. You'll see when we come up upon our search results, most of these images are facing the front of the Taj Mahal. Right now, we are looking in medium images. You'll want to keep going back and forth between medium and large, but since we know we're looking for a photograph of the building, we're going to start with large. We're going to find more high quality, higher pixel images. And after a while, you might notice all of these pictures are kind of looking the same. They're all looking at the front view of the Taj Mahal. One way to change that is to go into your search bar and change the search words. In this case, one good one for this building would be an aerial view. Notice a variety of suggested options come up. I suggest using your gut reaction first, putting in what you wanted, and then going back and considering some of the other suggestions. So you'll find a variety of wonderful images here. One thing to note, this image has watermarks on it. If you ever see an image with pictures of miniature uh, cameras or wording across the image, something that kind of looks opaque and embossed, that is a watermark and it is trying to deter you from ever using this picture. This picture is owned by someone and it is on their website, but they are not allowing you to use it for duplication or uh, public use. Let's go back and look at one image, this one right here, a spectacular image of the Taj Mahal from an aerial view. 
If you wanted this image, there's a few steps that you're going to have to do. The selected image that you're seeing right now is not the image that you're going to save. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your cursor over the image that appears on the right of the screen and right click. You're going to be given several options. Notice the open link in new tab. You do not want this option. This would give you the website where this picture is found and you would have to find the image somewhere within that web page. What you do want to do is you want to click on Open Image in New Tab. This is going to take just the image and show it to you in a much larger view so that you can determine whether or not you want this image. You will notice on the screen I'm choosing Open Image in New Tab. And at the top of the screen, you'll see a new tab has appeared. And when we click on it, we get a view of the image that we were previously examining. Now you can't see all of the image right now because part of it is hanging off of my screen recorder view. However, it looks like a fantastic image. I decide that I want this image. There's two things that I can do in order to keep this image. Both of them require a right click of the mouse. I can either save the image as and choose to save it on my computer or USB flash drive and it will save as a JPEG or a uh, picture file. This is advisable if you're in one of my online classes because you'll be posting your JPEG on the discussion board with your speech. If you're in a classroom, you probably are going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation. At this point, you probably don't need to save the image, but rather copy the image. If you copy the image, you're then going to be able to go to your PowerPoint slide, hover over your slide, right-click and paste your image to the PowerPoint slide. So again, our options are Save Image As or Copy Image. Let's go back one more time to review these steps. First, you want to find the picture after you have done your keyword search. Examine the picture to see if it's something you're interested in. Right-click over that image. Choose Open Image in New Tab. Go to that tab. Preview the image. And right-click Save Image As or Copy Image. The reason why we're copying, copying here is this is the image that we want to copy as opposed to the thumbnail previews, which are smaller versions of the picture on the main page. Be mindful of your word choices when you are putting in keyword search terms. When we go to liver and we add diagram, again, we want to remember to switch to medium. Look for ones that are the most useful for your presentation. In this case, out of these four on our screen, I would choose the first one. Not only does it show us six items of the liver being diagrammed, but it also shows us a preview of where the liver is within the body. This is almost a two-for-one visual. The other visuals that we had to choose from show us itemized parts of the liver but no scale to the human body. This one has way too many things being diagrammed, including the stomach, which is not part of our speech. And this one, while it does show us more connective parts of the body related to the liver, it's also massively diagrammed and labeled, which probably is going to be overwhelming to the audience. So if I wanted this image, I right-click, open image in new tab, view the image, and either save as or copy image. Other things that you might consider are terms like infographic. An infographic is Usually something you would see in a newspaper or on a brochure that tries to compile a bunch of ideas into one image. 
you want to make sure that you don't choose one that is too busy, such as this one right here with multiple things that overwhelm the audience. This one has a lot of text, as does this one. However, some of them are going to be rather simple and just showcase a few things on one picture that all have some sort of commonality. Be mindful when you're choosing an infographic not to pick something that is too wordy or too busy. Let's examine some of these word strategies to consider when searching Google Images. Look for real photos. Simply search by your topic name. If your topic is on rubies, type in rubies. If your topic is on African elephants, type in African elephant. Look for diagrams. You can type in things like liver diagram or even things that aren't necessarily part of human biology, acid rain diagram. And it will probably show you a diagram of how acid rain forms and how it comes down from the sky. For diagrams, consider medium images and find ones that have only essential and minimal labeling. Look for multi-element pictures. As you can see in the list, lung comparison, tornado sequence, Barbie timeline, dust storm time lapse. These are all key words that will allow you to find multiple things on a picture because you're asking for a comparison or sequence or multiple things on a timeline. As you can see in the images, there's a Barbie timeline with significant moments in the development of Barbie. There are two lungs, one healthy, one unhealthy. And there's a sequence of a time-lapse video showing you a car driving into a dust storm after four frames not being able to see it because of the heavy dust. Maps are good to communicate ideas. In the example shown, you see West Africa Ebola virus outbreak as of October 2014. This was found simply by searching Ebola map. If you want a more recent map of recent outbreaks, you could type in Ebola map 2019, but if there weren't many outbreaks in that year, it might be better just to go to Ebola map and search that, hoping to find a variety of different maps that are indicating what year the data is from. That is how I found this one. Consider medium images, and you want to make sure there's a title and a date on your maps. Charts or graphs are a great way to communicate data. You can look under measles chart or measles graph, measles cases. You could probably do the same with Ebola by typing in Ebola outbreak or Ebola cases. Consider medium images when you're looking for charts or diagrams and use a visual that has a title and a date. This is very important when you're communicating statistics and data. Finally, other good search words we've looked at include aerial view, as you see with the picture of the Taj Mahal, and infographic. But keep in mind the rule from before, keep the image simple. The one on the left that you see titled measles by the numbers shows about 12 different statistics related to measles. That is fine if you're reading a newspaper and have the ability to scan and jump back and forth between these. But as an audience member, trying to read that and trying to visualize what they should be focusing on is very difficult. On the right hand side, you'll see a measles infographic in red, much easier to read, and it only has four different panels that communicate the information. Let's take a moment and review the guidelines for when you're using visuals during your speech. First, announce your visual. For example, I'd like to show you this chart titled, How We Die in Avalanches. Second, physically point out two to three things the audience should notice in the visual. Look for the most important and related items to showcase in the image. For example, First, please notice that most victims, 66% of them as you see here, die from running out of oxygen when covered by snow. So you aren't typically killed by injuries, just 23% are. Most are just trapped and suffocate. Second, turn your attention to the bar chart on the right. 
From 2002 to 2012, 96 snowmobilers died from avalanches. Also, 112 backcountry skiers and snowboarders died. These are the sports that put you most at risk. Thanks for watching. This presentation template was created by SlidesGo, including icons by Flat Icon and infographics and images by FreePick.